hello good evening very good evening to all of you i welcome you to our uh, today's special program which we have arranged for all the nurses supporting staff the attending staff which have been unconditionally taking care of all the patients all over india and uh, we appreciate that you are present in today's session and uh, just just to give you a short uh, gist of our today's program so what uh, generally nebulization practice wherever nebulization practice happens uh, nurses or the supporting staff play a very important role and not only nebulization in any kind of practice uh, nurses are the ones who are actually taking the care of the patients after the doctor so we appreciate your efforts after the doctor you are the health advocate which represent the healthcare system in our india and uh, we appreciate you we welcome you to our program uh, today's program is the smart care care program which we uh, are going to have a live session by dr sarika gupta and she will be telling us about uh, safe and uh, hygienic nebulization practices how to do safe and hygienic nebulization in inside the clinic setup so uh, i am uh, very much sure that this today's session will be a value addition to all of your daily practice wherever asthma copd patients are there generally if you people are seeing normally these asthma and copd patients and you i'm very much sure that you must have uh, been doing the nebulization inside your clinics so dr sarika gupta will enlighten us today on the uh, safe practices of nebulization which kind of mistakes generally we perform while doing the nebulization inside the clinic and uh, it will help all of us to improve our healthcare practice on day to day basis so i welcome dr sarika gupta she is an md phd as a pediatric pulmonologist she is practicing in uh, kgmu hospital lucknow and uh, we uh, take immense pleasure doctor to welcome you as a guest speaker for our today's program and uh, i'm sure i'm sure today's session will be a very good value addition to all the nurses the attending staff sitting here today so over to you dr sarika gupta 
Thanks, Team Glenmark, for giving me this opportunity. So, without wasting time, I will start the presentation. So, screen is visible. Yes. Yeah. So, safe nebulization practices in clinical setup. So, uh, as nurses, it is very important for you to teach the patient the proper way of treating the nebulization. So basically what happened that uh, wherever you are working, the patients are coming to the clinic and uh, your physician uh, with whom you are working, they tell you that uh, such and such patient need nebulization. Okay, so just saying that do nebulize this uh, patient, whether it is child or adult, it is not uh, just uh, sufficient. Okay. They had just said and you will start. So you have to know the basic concept behind this nebulization, in which condition you have to do, how to do and how to keep this nebulizer clean. So these are the major learning objective for this uh, module. So in this module, you will learn about the obstructive airway diseases like asthma and COPD. What is the role of nebulization therapy in such conditions? Then what is nebulizer? Different types of nebulizer. So in market, lots of nebulizers are available. Now they are very short and handy nebulizers are available that uh, uh, parents do uh, take them during the travel. That uh, if something happened to their child, they just uh, keep it, uh, take it out and like a smartphone, which is a small device like they will give nebulizer. Then what are the benefits of nebulizer over other inhalation devices? A special care. Uh, a special precaution that needs to be taken in pediatric patient and in the geriatric population. And then important thing is that in the clinic, the same nebulizer is being used, although the mask and the, that uh, uh, chamber is, dip, uh, dip, uh, is used separately for separate patient, but it needs to be cleaned properly. So what are, how to clean nebulizer at clinic at home, associated equipment, and how to maintain the nebulizer. So these are the learning objectives. So first of all, what are obstructive airway diseases? So obstructive airway diseases, it is asthma, it is COPD. Asthma, it is common in pediatric age group, and it is common in uh, adults also. COPD, it is something that is in the adult age group only. So asthma, it is a chronic inflammatory disease, or you can say asthma is CID, right? CID say, uh, by remembering CID, you will remember what is asthma. So it is CID, chronic inflammatory diseases. And here the airway is hyper responsive. Uh, so you uh, come across some children, you say, this child is very hyper, or this person is very hyper. That means what? He uh, like, um, uh, things which are uh, taken normally by most of the population, a subgroup of population, they react more. So we say that they are hyper. So same for here the in asthma. So in some people, the airway is hyper responsive, like dust to, uh, to different triggers, like to dust. So everyone uh, exposed to dust doesn't sneeze or cough. But some people who have a hyperreactive airway, they will cough, they will have the breathing symptoms. So what it happens? So in response to trigger, result in bronchospasm. And this bronchospasm often reverses spontaneously. It gets corrected on its own. But sometimes treatment is needed. And it's so asthma, it is a common disease, especially in the childhood population. And uh, asthma-like presentation is very common in children below five years. We can't say that uh, below five years, there is many asthmatic. We don't label asthma in less than five years children. But they have tendency to develop asthma. Right? So we all know that whenever we start learning, uh, we start uh, uh, learning, we start always with the A. So A, B, C. So A, B, C of asthma is airway hyper-responsiveness. In response to this airway hyper-responsiveness, what happened? Bronchoconstriction. When the lungs airway hoti, that get narrowed down. And since this happened often, whenever there is a trigger, there is airway, airway hyper-responsiveness and bronchoconstriction. So it is a chronic inflammatory disease. So this is the ABC of asthma. Now, 
if so if we uh, look at the uh, section of the airway in a normal child and the airway is as well. so what difference you will find so in normal airway lumen is this much broad right and this is the airway wall okay one thing if there is any question you can stop me anytime and ask so better this talk be uh, interactive rather than the uh, just a didactic lecture sort of okay so this is the normal airway so there is nothing in the lumen lumen is wide open but in asthma what happens the lumen is narrowed down here diameter was this much here diameter is this much and you all uh, this uh, there is the uh, relationship between the airway diameter and resistance to air so the resistance the air resistance to air flow is inversely inversely proportional to the fourth power of the diameter so if there is a, even a small change in the airway diameter resistance will increase by four times right so here airway is uh, uh, diameter is narrowed down it is mucus all where which further uh, decreases the size of lumen and over a longer period because of chronic inflammation tighten muscle band is formed so this is the difference between the a child normal child and the child with asthma so all these lead to the bronchospasm and since it is a chronic process so tightened muscle is being formed and inflammation happens so what are different asthma triggers so dust so after dust if a child or person is having breathing difficulty or bronchospasm wheeze so it is asthma so other triggers are dust mite so these dust mites are present in our bed sheet so that's why it is said that bed sheet should be bed sheet the curtains the carpet should be cleaned regularly or they should be exposed to the sun to remove this dust mite animal dander so if you are a pet lover like a dog or the cat so stop doing that pollen from plants so what most of the children or the adults have what thing that uh, they say that whenever there is season change they have symptoms they have breathing difficulty so see what is specific about season change so whenever there is season change you say that you uh, you will be able to uh, we can recall that some special trees or flowers bloom out remember that some flowers bloom in the uh, season of october some bloom out in the season of uh, this thing march or uh, february and the march so because of the pollens of the seasonal plant the bronchospasm then cigarette smoke the moles fungus on damp wall exercise some people have that well, if they if they walk a, a lot or if they run or if they laugh if they are crying they start having coughing so that is exercise so induced trigger exercise is as a trigger cold air smoke smoke from fire and strong smell so all these are triggers for the persons who have a hyperreactive air so so when so in asthma when happen this hyper responsiveness and bronchial spasm whenever there is exposure to the trigger so we have to recognize trigger and that's um, it and avoid them as a first step towards controlling asthma the uh, second disease is copd so it is a disease in adults it is a third leading cause of death worldwide a major cause of mortality morbidity in healthcare groups and it significantly affect patient quality of life leading to frequent visit to clinical office frequent hospitalization and need for chronic therapy that is supplemental oxygen and medication so what is it here also the obstruction is happening so this pretty condition characterized by air flow limitation but it is a symptomatic treatable disease and if it is diagnosed early and treated early it can prevent progression and reduce spread so it is like anything which is going uh, which is uh, which you feel that it will uh, over a longer period it is going to be bad or it is going to um, uh, going to damage something like um, during this monsoon season if you feel like that you should take care of your roof so if you had taken care of your roof ahead of that problem then further progression and uh, will be stopped so same for these diseases early diagnosis and treatment prevent progression and reduces flare up 
and it is characterized by progressive persistent airflow obstruction. As well as obstruction, it was reversible, it was intermittent. Here it is progressive, persistent. This is also associated with enhanced inflammatory response to noxious particles on gases in the lungs and air. So here the trigger is the noxious particle and gases. So uh, that's why the most common cause of COPD is the air pollution that is causing COPD. So exposure to inhaled noxious particles, particularly tobacco smoke and pollutant, active smoking or passive exposure to secondhand smoke. Someone is smoking and you are sitting there. So it also affects you. Occupational exposure to dust, fumes, or chemicals, indoor air pollution, early life events like uh, if there is poor growth in utero, prematurity, frequent or severe respiratory infection in childhood. So if the, there is uh, there are uh, this, um, respiratory illness during the early childhood, it will affect in the adult life too. As by in childhood. And a genetic condition called alpha one nitrogen deficiency. So this is just to give a knowledge to you. You need not to go in detail of all these things. Okay. So what are the difference between asthma and COPD? So asthma it is more common in younger age with sudden onset of disease, the smoking associated but not always. Allergy is A for A allergy is characteristically associated with asthma. It will present with breathing difficulty, wheezing. Sometimes cough and sputum very rarely, rarely. COPD, it is a disease of adulthood. It is not a sudden onset disease. It develops slowly over a period after exposure to the pollutants or the cigarette smoke. Here, the smoking history is almost always present. Allergy, sometimes. Dyspnea, definitely breathing difficulty is going to happen. Wheezing here is not a uh, prominent sign as asthma. But coughing and sputum production is more in the COPD. So you can differentiate a COPD in asthma patient. So asthma patient will be a more of pediatric population. COPD always in adults. In the COPD, there will be breathing difficulty along with cough and sputum production. While in asthma, uh, breathing difficulty will be associated with wheezing, not with the cough or the uh, sputum production. So management. So management of asthma. So both are since chronic inflammatory disease. So that means you have to give long-term treatment. And for any problem to arise, if you take care before it arises, that is good. That is prevention. So asthma, prevention, long-term control. The medication which are used are inhaled corticosteroids. So basically it is a disease of lungs. So you need to give a drug that is going to act only on the lung. So no role of different tablets or syrup, more of the inhalers. So rise in inflammation is tackled by an anti-inflammatory drugs, and all these drugs can be given via a nebulizer. COPD, it is a disease that needs little therapy like a smoking cessation and bronchodilators different. Inhaled corticosteroid, combination inhalers, oral steroid, phosphodiesters, four inhibitors, theophylline and antibiotics, and sometimes surgery. So here the medications are either inhaler or tablet form. So, that, so now uh, with this background knowledge, so what are the conditions where we need to give the nebulizer? So chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that is COPD, acute exacerbation of asthma, and sometimes for maintenance treatment of asthma. Cystic fibrosis, almost daily because we have to give nebulization with uh, sorbitamol, 3% saline to have to facilitate physiotherapy. Same reason for bronchic disease. Bronchiolitis, it may be needed in some patient and respiratory infections. So these are the different etiology where the uh, nebulizer can be used. So can anyone tell chronic obstructive disease include diagnosis of which lung disease? Just chronic bronchitis, emphysema, both or neither. So either you unmute yourself or put in the chat box. So, Poonam ji, you will interact karenge? like uh, they will put in chat box or uh, ye, the, the, these people can put it in the chat box, but they cannot be uh, unmuted themselves. Okay. So, uh, so can anyone text in the chat box? COPD is what? Bronchitis or emphysema? So, we have got uh, three answers. One has said uh, chronic bronchitis. Second person has said uh, both. And third has said again the chronic bronchitis. Okay, so it is 
chronic bronchitis and emphysema not. So now uh, what to use, nebulizer or inhaler? So nebulizer, it looks very easy to use, easy, no hand-lung coordination required, ensure sufficient drug delivery. So it looks easier. Inhaler, here we need practice and lung, uh, hand lung coordination and may, okay, and may cause insufficient dosing, geopedized health outcome or reduced quality of life. So basically, if it is an acute problem where you cannot uh, generate a flu or there's a specific population like children, unconscious patient, elderly, especially in acute aggravation, then nebulizer is a good option. But for the longer treatment, Inhaler is a good thing because why I'm saying because if we will concentrate more on nebulizer uh, cross, so what happened that the patient use them at home nebulizer, so that is not good. So nebulizer should be used for the acute condition. So it is a very good option to be used in acute aggravation, especially and special vulnerable population. At, uh, for, uh, what are the advantage over injectables and food? So simple thing, if you have some problem in ice, you will put the eye drop in your eyes. You will not feel like eating a tablet or taking an injection. The same for this uh, uh, respiratory condition. So problem is respiratory, bronchoconstriction is there. So take a drug which is going to work only on the lungs rather than taking an injection or a drug or a tablet which will call, affect the whole body with some of the side effects. Sometimes injection need Open in the hospitals, ultrasonic vibrating mesh nebulizer. So these are good for some personalized tools because these are very small, handy to pay, uh, in instrument that can be carried, although they are a bit costly. So uh, what happened with this? So nebulizer, with nebulizer, there is immediate relief. If patient is critical, so he will not be able to coordinate with inhaled device. So in that condition, nebulizer definitely a good option for the optimal dose and targeted drug delivery. So again, to emphasize, nebulizer is used for acute excavation of asthma CPD. In ICUs where patients are unconscious, for the same reason involved in post-operative place where the person is unconscious or he is not able to have a, a strong respiratory drive. At home, when the patient can't use other inhaler and infants, children and elderly who can't use other inhaler device. So at home and in this population, if they can't use inhaler device, other inhaler device for some other reason because they are unconscious or there is acute activation or they have some uh, respiratory weakness, in that condition, nebulizer is a best option. So nebulizers are valuable who are elderly, who have difficulty with hand health inhalers, who require high treatment doses and have comorbidities. So what are the types of nebulizers? So this is the commonest one you have all seen in your clinic, jet nebulizer, easy to use, minimal cognitive ability here, like any village person also can uh, be trained to use it and ensure sufficient drug. Ultrasonic one, it has limited portability and no, uh, no ability to nebulize the suspension. So that, so inhaled corticosteroid or which comes in the suspension form can't figure it to the ultrasonic nebulizer. Vibrating ones, so they are portable, but costly. And here the da daily deep cleaning is required because if it is not clean, so here the membrane which is present here, they get destroyed. So that's why this is not very frequently used. So the frequently one used and which is cost effective also is jet nebulizer. So after the nebulizer is complete, the equipment should be washed with soap water and then dried off with a paper towel. Is it true or false? So anyone in the chat box?
Yes, so mostly people have answered it too. Okay, good. So everyone is listening. Good. So again, ABC, we are start everything with the ABC. So we read about the as ABC of asthma. Now, what are the ABC of nebulizer? So nebulizer has three parts. So medicine cup, the cap, and the mask or the mouthpiece, right? And, and it also has a tubing and it has a compressor. So this is the machine in which this tubing is attached and to it is attached the medicine cup, cap and the mask and the mouth. So everyone uh, must have seen this set, uh, this nebulizer. So here, this is connected to your mouth and nose. So ABC of using a nebulizer is first assemble. So uh, so this is the nebulizer. So first you have to assemble. You connected tubing here at this point, right? And at the other end in this tubing, in this tubing, you add the, the nebulizer chamber and the mask. So, and mask, uh, whenever you use mask, you have to take care that it is appropriate to the uh, size of the face. So, you have to take this much diameter take this one, from the base of nose up to you. So, this much portion should be covered with the mask. So, by that, you can find out that whether it is adequate size mask or not. So, it is clear. So, this is your uh, jet nebulizer. Here the tubing is connected and other end of tubing, this uh, mask, uh, sorry, this nebulizer chamber and the mask is connected. Right. So assemble, during the use of nebulizer, but the patient has to breathe so that the drugs will go inside. And after the use of nebulizer, you have to clean it. So assemble. So, so prepare a calm space, wash hand with soap and water, keep the part of nebulizer on a sturdy flat surface, connect to the nebulizer, to uh, connect the tubing to the nebulizer machine and to the reservoir. So, so, so this was the tubing which was connected here to the nebulizer machine. And at the opposite end, the tubing was connected to the reservoir, right? Now, uh, uh, how much amount of medicine you need to give? Measure that liquid and... Open it. Put the medicine inside it. Reassemble it and connect the face mask and apply it to the patient face for taking the medication. Anything left? So as cooking can't be done without uh, without uh, uh, without having the gas stove on. So here also nebulizer will not work if you had not done it. So you have to then you have to connect this switch to the socket and you have to turn it on. Only then the nebulizer is going to work. So test the nebulizer by turning it on, how to, to ensure that the spray comes out and then turn it off. So what you have to do, you have to first open is this uh, reservoir. You have to put medicine here, reassemble it, connect the tubing to the nebulizer, connect the tubing to the this uh, nebulizer reservoir, put the face mask on the child face, switch on and give the nebulizer. So this is the uh, step by step how to give nebulizer therapy. So once the nebulizer is running and producing a mist, 
the patient will begin the breathing treatment. Place the mouthpiece in your mouth and close your lips or secure the mask to your teeth. Sit in an upright relaxed position and breathe normally through your mouth. So here we have to sit in relaxed position and we have to breathe through mouth. This is very difficult to be done in children. So where there we say that uh, keep the child in the mother lap, pacify him and then start so that he have a normal breathing. Because if the child will cry, so it will cause turbulent flow and the delivery of the drug to the lungs will be hampered. Hold the nebulizer in the position recommended by the manufacturer. So, so it should be put straight, not like this one, that someone is lying down and you are giving this. In this way, the, all the drugs will be, all the drugs will come here and the, the, they will not come through the jet of the air through this. So it should always be put in this straight, like a straight place. So jet nebulizer call for upright position during use. Other type of nebulizer may have different effects. So since we are commonly using jet nebulizer, so for jet nebulizer, you have to keep in this upright position. And continue breathing normally until all the medicine is gone from the cup or there is no mist. So here, the at this so at this place where the medicine is there. So if all the medicine has been emptied, so stop nebulizer, nebulization, or if there is no mist coming from it, then also stop the nebulization. So either of that can be uh, ensured. Now how to clean? So it is essential to clean nebulizer after every use as a necessary part of cleaning. After each treatment, reassemble and wash the nebulizer parts in warm soap water or in the dishwater. Rinse and let the pieces air dry and store in clean dry place. So you have to uh, clean this one only. You have you need not to clean this whole machine, right? You have to just clean this chamber and the tube. And once a week, soak them in the vinegar solution for 30 to 60 minutes to disinfect them. The tubing and compressor for the jet nebulizer should never be put into the water because otherwise it is going to be damaged. They can be wiped with a damp soapy towel or disinfectant wipe if they get soiled. So you have to do that thing. So what are the important aspects to remember? So for as uh, from the patient point of view, so briefly inform about the treatment purpose and procedure before nebulization. So before just adding nebulizer to their face, uh, the face mask to their face and uh, putting on the nebulizer, tell them that why this therapy is needed and what will be the benefits. So communication is important to the patient. Inform patient to take slow and deep breath. Inhale through the mouth and exhale through the nasal cavity. It is a bit difficult in the children, especially when they have acute aggravation. They will keep on crying and crying. So you have to, to say, uh, the, say the parent that just specify the child and let him breathe normally as he do. But in adults, you can say that take slow, deep breath, inhale through the mouth and exhale through the nasal cavity. <clears throat> and conscious patients are recommended to take semi recumbent or civic position. So that nebulizer can be kept in upright position. So what are the do's and don'ts while using a nebulizer? So wash hand thoroughly before opening the cup of nebulizer. Carefully open the residues for different medication. Pour content into a thoroughly clean and dry nebulization chamber. When using nebulizer for sinusitis and infection, ear infection, breathe in and hold it for some time. And when using a nebulizer, breathe through your mouth if you have Okay. So these are the do's which we need to remember during the use of nebulizers. What are the don'ts? Use contaminated aerosol. So we should not do this thing. Do not nebulize while sleeping. Do not loosen the face mask. Otherwise, what happens? All the dust will move from here to the room. And do not sterilize the ampule using heat. If you will sterilize, it will become non-effective. Another important aspect related to nebulizer which need to be remembered, 
So the ideal volume that uh, need to be put in the nebulizer chamber is usually just two to four mm, not more than that or not less than that. Time from uh, nebulization time is time from starting nebulization until continuous nebulization has ceased. Or for bronchodilator, it should be less than 10 mm. So basically, uh, commonly the nebulizer solution uh, is given just for 10 to 15 minutes. In that period, all the solution is being used and there is no misformation. So how to find out what is the nebulizer, uh, nebulization end point? So patient should be nebulized for about a minute after a spluttering sound of them. So if you people are doing nebulization, uh, do take, uh, you must be aware that when nebulization is being done, some, some spluttering sound is happening. So if when this sound start, uh, stop, so after stopping of this sound, at least for a minute, nebulization should be given. Or if the residual volume, because uh, a residual volume of 0.5 to 1 ml will always emit. So you have to not, you need not to uh, clear all the solution in the nebulizer chamber. 0.5 to 1 ml will be good. So just remember, nebulize about a minute after a splattering sound occurs. Splattering sound is happening. Now it has stopped. Continue nebulization for one minute more. Now driving gas flow rate. So most jet flow nebulizers work at a flow rate of six to eight liter per minute. And oxygen need to be used. So why? Because when acute exhibition, it can cause hypoxia also. So always use oxygen along with the uh, nebulization, especially when given for acute episode in the unconscious person. So breathing pattern, breathing pattern should be calm and steady, normal breathing, and occasional deep breath may be needed. And face mask is preferred when the patient is too critical, unconscious and patriotic. Otherwise, if this is not the condition, then this can be taken even directly through, right? And prefer mouthpiece, so this mouthpiece, it should be comfortable enough. It should be um, when the patient is receiving anticholinergic and receiving histidine. So mouthpiece is preferred when patient is comfortable enough to hold the mouthpiece. Patient uh, is either receiving, so if you need to give anticholinergic or steroid, in that condition, mouthpiece is preferred. So in children, what are specific precautions that need to be taken? So children younger than five years of age cannot generate adequate inspiratory flow to effectively use dry powder. So if you all know that for the DPI, we have to take a deep breath to take the medicine. And a child who is less than five years cannot generate that much flow. So there is no use of DPI in children less than five years. With nebulizer, what happened? The drug nebulizer can deliver drugs without the child population. Infant young children sometimes if, uh, are not able to use the meter dose in so meter dose inhaler, you have to put a spacer in front of it and then a face mask, then only the child will be able to take the MDI. So in that condition also, nebulizer will be a better alternative. So uh, if uh, a spacer with mouthpiece or the face mask along with MDI, the child is not able to use, in that condition, nebulization can be given. So uncooperative children, so how to tackle in that situation? So sit in upright position, especially in mother's lap. So then the child will be a bit calm. If you will uh, ask the child to sit on the patient's bed and you will start nebulization, nothing will happen. The child will just cry and cry. So uh, let the baby sit in the mother's lap and then do nebulization. Then familiarize child with process. So, so what you need to do with the child? You show him first like this. You put on your face, put on the mother face, put on someone else's face. Uh, uh, interact with the child and then slowly put on the baby face so he will be a bit relaxed so make him feel comfortable give them something to do such a reading so give something to distract either give some soft toy or another thing and child should keep the mask on for the entire day because if you will just give to this thing to the children they will not they are not able to uh, follow all the direction keep that, that they will keep in the mouth and will do the nebulization so mouth, uh, mouthpiece 
need always be there along with face mask. Supervisor baby, don't put nebulizer on a crying children because in that condition, the, the air flow will become turbulent and there will be no effect of the lens. And, now, and make the nebulizer child friendly. So now these kind of nebulizers are being available to which the child is not scared of. So he will be happy to uh, see this uh, penguin and he will be able to nebulize. So this is the nebulizer where the compressor is there. Here is the point where the tubing has been connected and here is the nebulizer gas chamber and the face mask. So now, special thing about elderly people. So medication can be given by either jet nebulizer or ultrasonic or mesh nebulizer. And this is the easiest method for the elderly people to use an upper advantage because they are also not able to translate uh, this uh, respiratory flow enough to use uh, DPI or the MDI. And uh, since nebulization requires minimal hand breath formation, hand strength in respiratory flow, so this is a better option in this age group. And evidence indicates that elderly patients with asthma COPD find nebulized bronchodilator to be uh, more effective than therapy delivered via MDI. And another study has shown that older patients who use nebulized inhaled corticosteroid persistently showed fewer emergency department visit and fewer uh, increased use of the systemic corticosteroid. So where is the asthma medication placed prior to starting the nebulizer treatment? The medication does not need to be added. It is already in the nebulizer cap. Medication is squirted into the bottom half of the nebulizer cup. Medication is put into the face mask or the mouthpiece. Or the medication goes into the tubing for the nebulizer machine. So which option is correct out of all these? So is there any answer in the chat box? So, ma'am, uh, we have got uh, four answers. One is saying the medication is squirted into the bottom half. Another uh, is saying medication goes uh, into the tubing directly. Again, the third one is saying second option. Medication is squirted into the bottom half of, of the nebulizer. So, so this second answer, third is? So third is again uh, the same, the medication uh, to be added into the squatted into the bottom. Yes. So medication need to be added here into the bottom half of the nebulizer cup by opening it from here, putting the uh, drug here and then reassembling it, then closing it. So medication should to be put here, not in the tubing. Not in the tubing. If there is something to, in the tubing, it will go here. It will go here into the nebulizer and it will destroy it into that compressor. So medication to be here only. That is into the nebulizer cup. Here it is. So how to reduce common nebulizer error? So here it is written that medication is put here, not in this tubing. So store plastic wires in the original carton or the, or the foil pouch in which it comes. Vitals should be stored, uh, vials should be stored separately. Withdraw nebulizer medication from glass or into a container immediately before use. You need not to uh, uh, constitute the solution and keep into the syringe whenever there is need. So just before that, there is that medication. Do not remove nebulized drugs from ACD by an override. Do not store non dilutant solution that should not be used for dilution near the nebulizer to avoid. So basically, nebulizer drugs are diluted into the normal saline. If someone by mistake had kept a dextrose bottle or um, dextrose bottle or something else like uh, ISOP or another solution beside this, so it may happen that in a hurry you will take fluid from that and will dilute in that. So that need not to be used. That will affect the generation of the nebulizer particles and its efficacy. So in dilution should always be normal saline. So important feature. So part of nebulization should be checked regularly. 
Separate masks should be used for adults and children. Disinfection of masks should be done after each use. Proper screening of patient important before giving nebulization. Like if the child is COVID positive, if the person is a drug resistant TB patient. So all the, um, all the aerosols which are being generated that can infect the nearby patient. Nearby patient or yourself who is standing behind uh, in, uh, beside them. So proper screening should be done. Nebulization has to be done by 18 person. That's why this uh, class has been the plan to train you, to train you all people. The mouth should be rinsed after nebulizing a steroid to avoid oral care because you are taking nebulization through the mouth only. Some of the will get deposited in your mouth. So you have to wash the mouth. Make sure that the level of liquid in chamber is not exceeding 4.5 ml. Is platelet indicate drying up of the drug? That is the end point of nebulization. So uh, nebulization is uh, happening. It is by to this fluttering sound which is coming. So if you had not heard uh, from now, whenever you nebulize a child or a person, hear this sound. And you have to nebulize. Uh, can anyone take up to how much time you have to nebulize a person after this fluttering uh, sound has stopped? Anyone in chat box? Kisini Lika Kya Punamjina? Yeah, some uh, questions actually we have so many questions, but at the end of the session I think we will okay. Okay. So as nurse, it is important to teach your patient the proper way of doing the therapy to facilitate effective result and prevent complication. And emphasize compliance to therapy and report untoward symptoms immediately for appropriate intervention. So it is clear that before starting any therapy, you first train them so that the patient is confident enough to start this nebulization. Right. So thank you. Any question? So, yeah, ma'am, we have got uh, quite a few questions. So, I will uh, dictate one by one. So, Ms. Kalyani Matali from Nagpur has asked one question. So, if uh, the child is uh, not cooperative with the treatment and we generally uh, uh, keep the baby in the lying uh, down position and then give the nebulization. So, is it okay to give that if the patient is not cooperating? No. So as I told in this presentation, that nebulization, especially with this jet nebulizer, where you are using. So here, the this uh, this it should be kept in upright position. So nebulization should not be given in the lying down position. If the child is slipping or uh, you feel that the child is not taking appropriate, uh, not comfortable when sitting, uh, ask mother to take the child in the lap, in her lap. So, so it should always be in the standing position, uh, in the sitting position. If it is like that the child want to lie down only and then apply, so uh, raise the head end. So head end should be raised up to like uh, 56, uh, 50 to 70 degrees. And that's the semi recumbent position. And that's the position. So is it clear? Yes. Okay. So no nebulization in lying down position. Okay. So second question from Madurai, which we have from M. Pradipa. So she is asking that um, generally, what is the ideal time to give the nebulization to any patient, any pedia or the adult patient? So the same question I asked a minute before. So it's flattering sound. If it is stopped, so one minute after that. So uh, you are nebulizing, some splattering sound is coming. Now that sound has stopped coming. So continue nebulization for a minute after stoppage of this sound. So till that time, you have to continue nebulization. If, the nebula uh, if this chamber is containing 0.5 or 1 ml of solution, you need not to empty that. So you have to just concentrate on a splattering sound. It is coming, continue nebulization, it has stopped. Continue nebulization for uh, one minute after the stoppage of that song. Right? Okay. So, next question is from Ms. Dipika Vardre from Ahmedabad. 
सो शी इज आस्किंग आफ्टर टू टू थ्री यूसेज इफ वी क्लीन द नेबुलाइजर एंड द ट्यूबिंग और इफ वी रिप्लेस दैट इज इट ओके और आफ्टर एवरी यूज वी शुड स्ट्रिक्टली रिप्लेस द मास्क एंड द ट्यूबिंग so it depends on whether you are using on the same patient or different patient so if uh, the patients are different so after every use we have to do with the same uh, uh, tubing you uh, and face masks you can't give nebulization from one patient to another so tubing and face mask and this chamber should be used uh, separately for each and every patient for a single patient just clean after every use Okay. If for okay. one one more time you had left, it may be taken care of. But make this practice that after every use, clean. And for different patient, use different tubing, different chamber, different face mask. Okay. So next question is from uh, Miss Pankaja Patel from Ahmedabad again. So she is asking. Uh, generally, doctor uh, asks us to do the nebulization. So we do not know which patient, uh, which asthma or COPD patient, uh, which patient we are doing the nebulization. So accordingly, whatever the instruction has been given to us, we do the nebulization according to that. But how do we understand that how much ml uh, of the medication should be put, or if a line is to be added, not added? How to adjust the dosage? How do we decide? So this is the responsibility of the physician to tell you for initial few days, or it is like that if that physician has trained you. Okay, okay. if this is the patient, this medicine is being used. Dilute this one, dilute this. Like a uh, solvitamol rescue, we are coming. We need not to dilute them. We have to just uh, put them into the nebulization chamber and give nebulization. But some other drugs like uh, solvitamol solution is there. that need to be adapted so this is the responsibility of the physician that he or she explain you that which medication to be given to which patient diluted or not diluted not diluted how much amount or not or if it is not possible for them to train them uh, to teach them all time they should make a sop that should be um, this uh, mounted on the wall and they should just say okay this patient follow this point number 5 so that you are aware to, okay for this patient we have to do so this is the responsibility of the physician so it is they have to uh, uh, come out with the solution that how on, on every nebulizer use they have to guide you okay so okay that's it i think we are through with the questions thank so, you ma'am thank you so much for uh, taking out your valuable time and enlightening our audience on the safe practices and hygienic practices of nebulization i think two to three things which i could recollect from the entire session is the main thing is the uncooperative children generally at pedia clinics by all the nurse uh, staff must be agreeing with me that uh, people generally do not cooperate after one to two minutes they have to take out the nebulization and the child again suffers so what exactly they want to do they have to do you have enlightened them very well also you have demonstrated the safe and correct technique to use the nebulization i think it will help them in their daily practice and of course abcs of asthma abcs of using the nebulizer the, everybody practices it but nobody teaches them the sop to follow that so that i think will be a very much good value addition to their daily practice so thank you so much for your time and uh, happy birthday ma'am once again uh, thank you for carting out your time on your birthday and i will re i request all the nurses who are participating in today's event uh, after the session you can uh, the uh, portal is same so you can uh, attend the mcq 10 mcq questions are there for you so just uh, submit the answers and uh, we will be proce proceeding with the certification for you once you are eligible with the 50% qualification criteria so you take your time and answer the questions the questions will remain on the portal so thank you ma'am thank you thank you so should i leave now yes yes thank you thank you very much